and welcome to the stream. Today we'll be, uh, I'm taking a break from the bug fixing, from the endless bug fixing I've been doing. And we're going to do a bit of balancing. Now it's desperately needed a balance, but there's been, the, the flow of bugs coming in has just been constant. I was, I was trying to do them all and I, we've got to a point where there's a manageable amount of bugs now to fix. But whilst, um, so, so I'm going to do some balance, I think, in free play at the moment. So we'll, first thing we're going to do is just set up a free play game, get it loading. And as we, as we do, did with, um. With last week as well, I'll talk about things upcoming in the patch whilst we're um, whilst we're working on other things. So first of all, let's do it on the new map. Uh, what should what should we, um, balance test? I'll be a purple colony because you know why not? Uh would be leaf cutters because they're the ones that need testing. I don't want to stray too far from defaults, although I do want to set a victory condition. So what have we got? Biomass does what? That's colony size. Domination is just earn points for defeating enemies. But let's do domination. Try ten, roughly ten thousand points. You know, it's it's really difficult to get a spot on figure here. <laughs> Maybe I should make it lock at certain values. I don't know. I don't think I need to worry about it that much. Or allow people to type it. Yeah, maybe. Right, I'm not going to have Fog of War. I'm not going to disable upkeep. I'm not going to have attack waves. And I'm just going to leave it like that. So the only thing I've actually changed is um, the victory condition. Right, so I did a quick calculation on the victory condition the other day, just out of interest to see what kind of difficulties we'd be looking at when we got towards the end. I need to make sure I've got some paper at hand. Yeah, that's, that'll do. Let's scrap of paper here. And it, it turns out the... Uh, if you get to, if you, right at the very end of the game, just before you win, the victory condition pumps the uh, difficulty value up by 250%. And at 250%, I believe you're on scale level 5 with creatures. And at scale level 5... They're more than more than like three and a half times the health and damage, so they should be massive by that point. The enemies, and they're also really likely to just attack you. So, I think essentially, I need to do a bit of a recalculation on how much. Uh, How much the difficulty value is pumped up by the by getting close to the victory thre threshold. I was thinking, so what what I might do in this is make a an easy, normal, hard and insane option in the victory condition, and basically make it so easy it pretty much doesn't change the difficulty the closer you get to the victory condition normal it changes it a bit 
hard it changes it quite a lot and then insane it changes it i think the level that it's at, at the minute is probably an insane level of it my my suspicion is when you get close to the victory condition you've got to kind of bunker in to your base and let the enemies come to you but that's not really an option with leaf cutters Also, at those high difficulties, you'll be getting hardly any food for killing stuff anyway, so even if you're not leaf cutters. Oh no, I don't know why I did that. <sighs> okay, my exit's over here. Look at my purple bottom leaf cutters. Some things have been implemented. Um, not all things, though. I haven't. We haven't yet got. Oh, hang on. Before I do that, we haven't yet got the thing that's meant that's going to stop enemies going um, near your nest entrance. So I'll still have that issue. Oh, sorry, pardon me. I part way through implementing the um uh, part way through implementing the Stuff that's that stops enemies wandering underneath here and underneath your above nest entrance. Right, hang on, I did spot a little glitch there that needs looking into. And that's part of the new system, so we might need to come up with a new fix for that. I'll let them harvest once more and then bring them back. Oh, trap yours. I'm off. Maybe they'll go away. Refuse chamber. Build one here. Make some use of this strange space I carved out. All right, expert archer. Good to have you with us. killed any enemies yet. Game difficulty is currently on 53%. That's quite high. There's a lot of murdering going on on the surface. Of course there is, why wouldn't there be?
So balance balance checking is going to involve all sorts of things here. So it's going to involve um, seeing how difficulty changes as I get close to this value, and feeling out whether it's ridiculous. It's going to also involve uh, Uh, feeling out how difficulty is changing as just as the levels progressing right let's get my media up and running these need a pretty big location Leaf storage needs upgrading. I've managed to avoid combat for now. And I'm, oh, sorry. How's the coding going? It's also nice to see watch you play the game. Also love the extremist level. Thanks very much. I'm glad. Um, I think different people like different uh, like different levels. Hopefully, they all provide something unique. That, that's kind of the what I'm what I'm aiming for with the the extra levels. It's just kind of unique, different experiences that I wouldn't have a chance to do in the campaign or or in other levels. Just ideas that are rattling around in my head. I've got a really cool one, which I think is going to be my next one of those levels. I've got to be careful that I don't put too much into it when I actually do it, because it could be could be really good. That's loads of leaves all over it. So I'll explain the idea now. We'll see if it ever comes to fruition. Uh, one sec, just trying to work out. What's going on? What I'm missing? My leaf processing is a bit slow. I might do. Let's just build a few more workers. Just so I can up the amount of minims I've got. become bigger than the other, I'll swap them around. Oh, oh, enemies, enemies, enemies. That's all right, looks like they're just passing through. Oh no, they are not passing through. Right, come on, it's a fight. My first points towards victory. Okay, so the concept of the next, well, it, it won't be the next one of these that comes out, but when, when the next one of the extra levels that comes out, it'll be, um, somewhere down the line but the 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 concept of it is that you're it's making use of the if you remember in the uh, the challenge three you start off with in the left hand form carrier and then you press go and it op the map opens up to the big wide one I was thinking you could do something like that with a big map. So you start it, so you start like in the centre of this big map, and then as you explore an area, the mini map opens up, makes it bigger. 
and as you explore those areas and you discover those areas on the mini map it um it unlocks new objectives for you so maybe you'll you'll get to an area and that area will be full of army ants and the objective will be to defeat the army uh, an objective would be to defeat the army ants, and it, I see it like it's like an adventure, like you you're exploring, finding objectives, and completing like different quests. And then, like as you do it, now this is where I've got to be careful that I'm, I'm not feature creeping it. But as you do it, um. Going on. Yeah, as as you do it, you um unlock upgrades for the colony. So maybe and I, I think I'd want to do it. You're a leaf cut colony. So I've done one where you're a wood ant colony now. I want to do one where you're a leaf cut colony. So, so maybe you don't start off with the ability to build mages or anything like that, and then as you unlock them, you go further. Further you go from the base, harder it gets. So you need to need to go in a circle. Yeah, yeah. So what what you what you probably do with it is you probably have the easier objectives right next to your base, then harder ones further away, and then further away. The whole the whole thing we've got in the game with um, with it being harder the further you go away from your base uh, was actually something we designed in from a very from a very early point in the game. Oh god, there's a jumping spider in, the, in, the, in our base. Oh, there's two. I didn't even realise. It's going mental. <laughs> He's on a rampage. Oh my god. Well, let's hope we're... Uh, let's hope we've hit a critical mass. I'm not convinced we have. <laughs> Difficult to be on there. Fifty one percent. It's a ramp that's doing that, the the difficulty ramp. Well, time to get some of those points in, I guess. Oh dear. I've got lots of resources in the bank, so I can I can continue fighting it for a while. Oh look at this one. I'm getting mental. Right, I think. I'm not really sure, you know. I've got virtually no uh, no creatures left. I think this might be r rip. There's another enemy over here. No, I'm doomed. God, there was no attacks, and then the and then like five came in at the same time. You think when playing leaf cutters, there'll be an option to see how many minims you have in your bay? I hadn't, I hadn't actually thought about that. Uh, I mean, you can figure it out yourself. Um, it's just, it's just the amount of workers and soldiers you've got. So you get one minim for every worker, and one minim for every soldier. Oh god. I think reload will just restart it for me at the minute. 
Oh, it's good to see my defeat here. Animations are working properly now. But yeah, the further away, the harder it is, the further away from your base you are. Was um, it's part of the trail system really. So the more ants you've got, the more it makes sense to stray from your base. Well, the more the more you can safely stray from your base. Try that again. I might try and do here to keep the economy rolling. Let's build my leaf storage here, my rubbish tip here and then try and build my base around them. See how that goes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. That was interesting. So, funnel web should not be trying to kill that thing. I don't actually think it can kill that thing. That's a bit unlucky, that. Oh no, it did. Yeah. That's very unlucky. In fact, what I might do is restart. <laughs> Having said that, there's some really nice plants nearby. Maybe I should just sack off these little shoots. Go get some uh, tasty leaves. Ah, I can't build waste dump, dump here. Waste dump needs to have only one entrance, else people will walk through it. Yep. I build it here, though. It's coming off the leaf thing. We'll see how this works. Might not work. someone who's not good at maths. I suppose you could have it so when you hovered over that, it t like hovered over one of these, it tells you how many minims there were. Oh my gosh. What have I done? That was a waste of resources. The problem is with leaf cutters, if you sell something, leaves are up and they've got to be reprocessed. Oh, this game's going well.
right, well, I need my rubbish dump. Back up to the surface, you lot. I think the default difficulty is a bit too high. In fact, I'm on 55% already is a bit weird. Maybe it should default at zero. Hmm. I'll wait till I've got enough resources to... Uh... Build the rest of it so I only need to go in once. It's a trap! It's a trap! Tasty leaves. I think I started in a pretty lucrative area actually. How are we doing? Right, I want to get some more workers now so we can get some more minims so we can speed up our production line. Thirty or twenty-five, yeah. This is another way to improve the economy is to build speed up tiles. It speeds up the minims as well. Yeah, 25 cents sounds about right to me. Right, I'm just going to get some more coffee. Back in one second.
Right. Enough of my chair. Do you think that when the scientists are finished, they'll throw out our queen in the thought that she's dead and actually survive and start a new colony? Do you think that's a good idea? I'm not, I'm not mentioning anything to do with the storyline. We have the direction we want to go with it. You'll have to just wait and see. You can chat amongst yourselves about it. You can speculate, but I can't speculate. <laughs> it's one of the uh, negative aspects of working on a game yourself, is you can't speculate about it. <laughs> My minims are going to go here. Minims, my dear. Need to get some of these before fighting breaks out. Yeah, I can get the game audio sorted. Nope. The game audio doesn't want to work at the minute. One sec. Do that. Nope. I think I'd need to shut the thing down and reopen it. Uh, hang on. Hang on. Let's not do that. Let's not constantly bash our heads into a bunch of enemies. That would not be a good idea. Yeah, we do a leaf grab, get both groups. to get a few of these before my nest starts getting invaded. Now, there is a point in the level where uh, something called uh, a no invasion timer drops off. Like, at the beginning of the level, it stops enemies invading you. And then that drops off. I'm wondering if that's what happened last time. Might be. These stars are full. The workers have done all they can to right, the Let's bring source. everything back in the ground considering they seem to be being slaughtered. Enough food to feed the new brood. Okay, so they're, they're now loitering around here. I think we're going to have to take them on. We 
should be able to now we've got a couple of minims with us. <laughs> I love how this one spider's murdering hundreds of crickets. Chat. As the games get bigger and bigger, it's constantly build on it. Yeah, I, 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 I don't think we. I think even when we finished the game as such, got to version one point oh, I don't. I at that point, I don't think we're gonna stop working on it. That'll just be a nice completed campaign that you can play from start to finish. I still think we'll build on it. Possibly even carry on building on the story as well. Maybe the real final boss is the evil scientist who go back to the lab and try and kill him. I doubt it. That'd be a bit dark. <laughs> I'm not. I, I, I say I'm not. Uh, I'm not going to join in conversations about the uh, storyline. Oh, been attacked on the trail. Uh, let's turn gathering off for a second and just deal with this problem. Okay, I've got. I've got a Medea on the on the issue. Hopefully, that'll be enough to deal with it. Trap jaw there as well. Oh, I jumped backwards and then my things went and attacked something else. I won't be able to jump for a while. There we go. Okay, corpse is destroyed. Standoff. The colony is starving. There's not enough food to feed the new brood. Ah, rubbish. Right, come on now. Let's let's fight. Which they don't make me walk into the uh What's that? A little spider? It might be a spider. Oh, we got this. Right, better to deal with the problem head on, eh? Right, let's finish harvesting this. Forget combat, just go straight up the bush. It's not gonna work, now we've got... You know what? Fighting resumes. Let's get some leaves in quick.
Hit isn't going particularly well. Trap jewels are actually really strong. Combat wise. Oh, I'm not liking this. I'm just losing everything. Right, everything back underground. The queen is in imminent danger. Oh, there's a spider in my base. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm dead again. I think this again. This is. I think this. I've hit this point of um, of the no attack dropping off. And I just get destroyed at this point. My base hasn't quite quite got there. To the point where it can properly defend itself. Okay, so with that in mind, a few things I can do. So and there goes the ant colony. It's going fairly terribly here at the minute. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, my queen is being destroyed by a small group of of, uh, of trapdoor ants. They're they're having the time of their lives. Right, so I I need to address this at the minute. Um. So either the no attack timer needs to last longer or I definitely want the starting difficulty to be lower the colony is starving. There's not enough food to but I still don't think that's going to change the amount of enemies that attack you at the point the no attack timer hits that it falls off because at the minute it's it's now it now appears to just be a constant stream of enemies. The queen has fallen. Her final death rattle drowned out by the feasting of her executioners. Let me have a quick look. I think I know what they are actually. Oh no, Ladybird. Okay, this looks like a Ladybird landing in a. Um... a funnel web nest. Okay, so attempted to access. Ladybird via dynamic cast, but it's pending kill. Okay, so there I'm doing a valid check, um, just to check whether an object's pending kill or anything like that. That should be fine. Should be fine. Okay. Hello, violent intent. Good to have you with us. Yeah, I'm 
I'm going to be addressing that here because I'm I'm getting wrecked at a very specific moment and it's kind of deceiving because you everything's fine like everything's fine and then I think what happens is the no attack timer drops off then all of a sudden everything makes the decision to attack you well not everything but four or five different enemies of varying strengths do and you're just you're just dead So, uh, first of all, let's have a look at the free place setup. So, these are the default values. And I think these are important to get right because most people won't change them the first time they play free play. And if they just get in wrecked after 10 minutes, they might never play free play again or play about with the values. So, default values have to be an acceptable game of free play. So the start difficulty says it starts at 0 0.3. Huh, okay. There might be a bug here. Let's check. So free play, new game. Advanced. Huh. Yeah, that should that should tell you what difficulty it's on. But I find it interesting that that suddenly jumps back to 50% when it's meant to be 0 0.3. Can't wait for the free play tier thing. Enemies getting tougher and tougher the longer you play. That's already in the beta, actually. It's uh, if if you if you if you're on the beta. Um, the open beta at the minute. It's already in there, but the problem is getting to that point. I had someone uh, on the forums talking about how they can't complete any, any of the, the victory conditions because as they get close to the victory conditions, the difficulty scales so high that the creatures become massive and dangerous. <laughs> so again, balance that needs addressing. Um, It's in there, it's just really uh, difficult to get to. <laughs> so even without the tiered enemies at the minute, things are hard. Right, I see what the issue is. It's coming from current setup, which comes from basic free play setup. It's being passed over. My guess is the default for it is wrong. Should be something here called free play setup or setup or something like that. Let's uh, let's let's follow through what happens when this button gets pressed because it gets passed in. Here, current setup. That's it. Okay. So yeah, there's there's the issue. The difficulty value on. Um, Okay, so we need to change this. Right, I'm gonna go lower than you even suggested. I'm gonna say 0 0.2 is what we're gonna start with. That's the default difficulty value. So we're, we were at 50% there. And that'll be what's getting a lot of people is they don't realize they're playing at half difficulty to start with.
Um, just to mention before anyone goes anywhere, um, the what I, what I want to do is I want to create a load of pre setups. I haven't created any yet, and I haven't asked anyone to to uh, give me to to give me any yet because. Um, the balance is so off at the minute, but once I've addressed this this rebalance, so I'm going to do a balancing pass today and a bit over the weekend, and then I'm going to put out a patch. And I could do with people coming up with some good setups and saving them, and then uh, passing me the strings. So maybe ones that have got certain victory conditions set up uh, that feel good, certain. Um, Things selected like only rainforest creatures and, and that sort of thing. And various game modes. And I want to give them a go and uh, decide on some to be the default options. So they'll basically be available for, for everyone when you go to play a free play game. There'll be a list of setups that are available for everyone. And I could do with... Um, you guys help coming up with that because there's so many options in free play at the minute So that didn't work. Why didn't that work? I want that to show the difficulty as well before we go any further. So I think times by a hundred.
think that should do it. Although I haven't actually looked at what the text says, so it probably doesn't make any sense. Let's have a look. What does the text say? Choose the starting difficulty. Of the actually, that should be fine. Yeah, okay. So that's right now. Huh. See here I've managed to make it update as it's as it's going. Need to look at that because I need that functionality there as well. Yeah, okay. Let's see what I've done with the other one. Because clearly I've done something clever. Clearly I'm cleverer than I give myself credit for. Huh. What's the difference? What's the difference between these two? Oh, that's not one of them. I don't see the difference because there's a create and then an initialize and then go. What am I missing? Create. Should I just go? Hang on. Might is it running it more often or something? It only seems to run it the first time I click it, but that value updates. Something's wrong. Maybe it's... Hang on. The only thing I can see that's different is that other box which calculates the value. Like this. From victory threshold to tooltip text. What does that do? Finds the option, runs it through some calculation, returns it. No, it's doing the same thing. It's doing get value, which is exactly what I'm doing. I don't know. It's not running it more often. Maybe there is an option there to say that I like, update tooltip real time or something. What's the difference between these sliders? The only thing I can see is that there's tooltip text in one of them, but that really shouldn't make a difference. Maybe it does. Anyway, 
I'm not going to rack my head over it. I'll note it down, something to figure out later. Difficulty slider, update, number. Has moved. Okay, now, why? Sorry, I'm calling you Zergeresh. <laughs> okay, so. Why is that still coming up as the wrong thing? Um, so if we have a look in basic free play setup, let's see where, where else this is referenced. It might be that this gets set. To, right, there's a set here. Ooh, I think I know what this might be. Okay, so chosen save. Game setup. There's another zero point five there. It's clearly just taking a default value. Default's coming from somewhere. So these, this is loading a, a, a setup save and taking the setup save from that. However, update setup from save. It's one that's not used. Pretty sure that's in the process of starting the game now. Yeah, it's the start button. Uh, Pretty sure it's just because of the default. Somewhere, where's the unconstruct? Let's find it. Let's find the unconstruct. Okay, so construction event is here. Per setups, this is meant to be pre setups. So, okay, here it is, custom, I reckon this is it, I reckon in, this is getting added to pre-setups here and various values are being set. Called. Ah, here. This is it. And that's it. I think I found it. Hello, Huff Nerd. Good to have you with us. Right. OK, 
Okay, this is taking me a lot longer than I thought it would. There we go. Okay. Starting difficulty 20%. Okay, so that was... That was one of the major issues. Okay, the next one that we need to have a think about is the it'd be in the free play director somewhere this thing's got a bit messy okay uh i think is that called a, a no attack timer or something this is this might be it yeah there we go okay so the grace period is exactly 10 minutes So my guess is I'm being killed as soon as that's dropping off. I mean, the fact that I was starting at 50% difficulty didn't help, but... So here's the question. Do we increase the grace period... Ubers have a grace period of 20 minutes, by the look of it, 1,200 seconds, 20 minutes, right? Yeah, 20 minutes. So Ubers don't spawn at all in the first 20 minutes of a free play game. Uh, standard creatures don't invade you in the first 10 minutes. I could do an option change myself. I'm very aware at the moment that uh, that there's a lot of options going into free play. As much as it's, um, as much as I've hidden a lot of them, and the idea is that the community helps me come up with, um, with free play setups, that would be fun. I still think some of them should be control because uh, it, it's too many variables for people to have to play with. Now, what something I've been thinking about. To do with the um, with the victory conditions is having an an easy normal hard and insane with the victory conditions, so like a separate difficulty which makes the victory condition impact the difficulty percentage less. Grace period does grace period prevent enemies from waiting on the nest entrance? No. Now I'm addressing that issue uh, separately. And we're in the process of dealing with that at the minute. So we've 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 implemented some things to stop them wandering into your nest entrance and ha hovering there, hovering there. Um, later today, I'm going to be looking at uh, having it so their swarm points can't go within a certain distance of the nest entrance unless they're unless they're attacking you. So I'm actually going to back the enemies off from the from your nest entrance because I know that's that's a, that's really annoying because it's completely random and you can end up with like a, a beach tiger be beetle just sitting on top of your your nest right really early on. The great what the grace period does is prevent them from invading. So if a if an enemy AI wants to invade your nest, it just tells it it can't. 
However, I th think it's having a opposite effect somewhat in that it's waiting 10 minutes and then sending and then because no enemies have invaded you're getting loads of them at the same time so it's kind of it's a bit funny yeah I mean there's a lot of RNG in free play anyway there's no getting a, getting around that. Um, the creatures randomly path around. They haven't got set routes or anything. That's with, and RNG really helps free play in that every time you play it, it's completely different. Um, so on that front, it's good. On the other front, you've got you possibly were worth restarting the level a few times until you until you end up with a really good amount of resources by your ne by your nest. Uh, and you've got issues with every now and again you'll be playing a game and all of a sudden you just get killed because an Uber's decided to attack you on the twenty minute mark. So yeah, there's there's four and there's there's good things and bad things about it. Definitely, free play is the area of the game that's uh, less balanced. I think some people really enjoy free play, but on the whole, I think if if the game was just free play, uh, it would be a it would we'd have a lower score. <laughs> On uh, on Steam. The the campaign is the best part of the game, definitely, and rightfully so. We've put most work into that, and it's uh, very polished. Free play is essentially just me. <laughs> it's it's me, and I've been pulling people in to help with various little aspects of it. But what free play does do is it allows replayability of the game, whereas the campaign you can replay it to an extent, but you can do everything. In free play, you can't do everything. There's just too many possibilities. Anyway, I'm rambling. <coughs> I need to make a decision on this. Okay. So, here's an option. I have an easy, medium, hard, insane setting in free play which affects various things. So on top of having the difficulty, oh, there's too many, it's too many difficulty settings. Basically, what that would do is determine various other aspects of free play, but I don't know if it's too many options. Because you you could make it you could make like an easy medium hard insane affect several things so you could make it affect the grace period so you had a much larger grace period if you're on easy for example you could have you could make it affect um, how much the victory conditions affect the difficulty so you could have the <coughs> you could have the difficulty. Uh, ramp up much less on easy than it does as you approach a victory condition than it does on insane you could have it affect things like ramp speed so at the minute ramp speed isn't determined by the player that's just a value set in the background but maybe on on higher on higher difficulties the difficulty ramps up faster when you set to ramp or spikes, you could make it so um, spikes uh, were more frequent or lasted longer when uh, when on harder difficulties. So basically, what you do is have.
is have the 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 insane easy medium hard and insane would actually affect uh, the rate of change of difficulty whereas the difficulty options uh constant ramp etc uh, etc et uh, affect how how it changes Multiplayer becomes a thing. I'm so versing <laughs> verse my little brother. <laughs> we love the game. Would love to see better uh, colonist. Is. Who the better colonist is? Also, the difficulty option sounds really good because some people find free play too easy if they use their own colony. Yeah. Well, free play is definitely a lot easier if you use um, if you use a form character colony. Uh, because you can you can completely abuse the queen's ability that that queen that get out of jail free card card which is the queen ability um in free play i've seen people just tunnel out like all underground enemies in one go let them get to let them get to their queen and uh and then the, have the royal guard kill them all off and have a load of free food at the start it's a clever tactic um, but it shouldn't be the way to play free play. And leaf cutters inevitably are going to be the hardest race to play in free play. Because, uh, I mean, the, the um, race, the species, uh, the, the different colonies are not made equal um, in the game at all. They're not balanced against each other because they don't have to be. The only one that it's even slightly. I mean, it, 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 at the minute we're a single player game, so we don't have to worry about that too much. Anyway, these thoughts are rattling around in my head, keep me awake at night. Um, so, difficulty could also affect the grace period. However, like. I was saying before, I actually think grace period is having a negative impact on the game. So having 10 minutes to set up is fine. However, if you if the grace period hadn't been there, you might have ended up with one enemy attacking, then another. So you've thinned the herd a bit before the 10 minutes is up. Leaf cutters would be destroyed in multiplayer. Yes, they would be. Um, I think if you did, if if we did make a multiplayer mode, uh, you'd either have to play the same colony types, or there'd have to be a multiplayer balance done. So uh, basically, multiplayer takes stats from a different stat sheet than single player does, which wouldn't be that hard. Um, I mean, the stat sheets just sit, just sit in the in the files. I can do one stat sheet to another. I guess the advantage of leaf cutters is you're not competing with others for their resources because your resources are separate. However, your resource processing is not instant like everyone else's. Oh, these are theoreticals down the line. I'm not. Uh, let's not get into that now. Um, I'm not sure about the grace period. I actually think this possibly needs a rework. So rather than a grace period, maybe what we have is a the chance for them to invade increase just increases over time right, I'm going to I'm going to note this down anyway. I'm not going to change this one in the stream because this one's this one's a bit too uh, involved because it involves uh, looking at the swarm points themselves and when where they make the decisions. What I think I'm going to do is 
rather than a grace period, it's going to be an invasion um, probability. And as you get closer to the end of the invasion probability, uh, it, it, gets, it gets more probable that they'll invade. And what I'll probably do is rather than this being just a bool here can invade, it'll be a function can invade and that function will do the probability assess, will, will do the, um, the thing based on it and then uh, give, give the swarm point an answer, but it might give a different answer each time it's asked. Okay, so I'm gonna write that down. Uh, invasion, no, can invade. Get, maybe I will do that now. Get um, more probable. The closer players get to Uh, the grace period ending. Um, the other thing I said we'd do is the dip various difficulties. I think I've talked myself into that now. So you'll have, uh, as, as well as the um, the difficulty change type and starting difficulty, you'll also have uh, uh, easy, normal, hard and insane. And as a, uh, as per usual, easy will half at all enemies' health in the game. And the other modes will and the other modes will affect the rate of change of so difficulty to affect rate of change of uh, of difficulty <laughs> and he's come up with a okay Right, I've got a plan of action there that is going to make free play uh, more um, more accessible to more people. Right, I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave it there for now. Um, I'm gonna do another stream later this afternoon. Another idea for invading is having low health enemies attack first, like the Devil's Coach horse. Oh, it's not a bad call either. I'll, I'll, I'll write that down uh, something to consider um, so I guess you'd say uh, invasion probability based on creature score or killing so that way uh that way you are more likely to get um to get the lower level enemies attacking you just an idea after the grace period the game could start requesting invasions of a certain strength at random intervals strength request being dependent on the progress time since last time oh, i see you're like um spacing out invasions that's reducing rng isn't it Oh, I'll put that down as an idea, but that one's a quite quite a bit more involved to deal with because there isn't any man invasion manager in the game at the minute. They're all making their own decisions when to invade or not, and it it's more likely based on difficulty. And after a certain difficulty, I think it's after a hundred and fifty percent or something, there's a very high chance that they'll be just invading. 
Anyway, um, so what was that? Start requesting invasions for certain strengths at random intervals. Uh, invasion request. Specific strengths. Um, I can actually think about something that would cause that. So, what you could do is at certain points in the game, it does a quick check. Uh, so maybe every few minutes it does a quick check, or maybe rolls a dice or something and then goes through all the swarm points uh, and it's got a, a, a score in mind that it wants to send at the player. So it goes through them and then flags them to be invasion. Uh, so certain bunches of creatures come to invade at certain intervals. Yeah. Uh, all good thoughts anyway. Um, right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna stop there. I'm gonna go sort myself, go, go have lunch. Then after lunch, so probably a couple, probably a couple of hours away. Um, after I've settled back down again, I'll start streaming again, and we'll and we'll get some of these ideas implemented. See what we can do. Okay, so yeah, thanks for joining me this morning. Hopefully, see you this afternoon. And uh, see you later.